we're talking about fathers as we get ready for Father's Day. And uh, we have looked at a couple of good examples. We looked at Abraham or Abram who prayed to have children. Uh, he was a man of worship, a man of prayer, and he, he prayed to God, because realizing God is the source of children. And then we looked at Job, who prayed over his children, uh, even though he was sure that they loved the Lord and blessed him in their hearts. They might have made a mistake and stepped this way or that way and, and stumbled and fallen, and who doesn't? So we need to pray over our children. Dads, uh, if you don't do that, make sure that you pray over them. And then today we look at a, a bad example that carries into another generation. In, uh, in Genesis chapter 25, you have the story of Esau and Jacob, how uh, Isaac who is the father, has two sons. And he loves one more than the other, and the mother loves the other son. Let me read to you what it says in Genesis chapter 25, uh, verses 27 and 28. When the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful, skillful hunter. <laughs> Easy for you to say. A man of the field. But Jacob was a peaceful man. That's difficult to translate. Peace-loving, uh, he wasn't a hunter, not a sportsman, that kind of thing. Uh, dwelling in tents. He liked to stay inside. He didn't go out and tend the fields. He didn't like to do that thing. He liked to hang out inside and cook and do those kind of things. Now, here, here it comes. Now, Isaac loved Esau. Actually, it means dearly loved. Isaac dearly loved Esau because he had a taste for game, but Rebekah loved Jacob or dearly loved Jacob. Wow. Can you imagine growing up in that home, these two boys, dad loves this, this son more than the other son, mom loves this son more than the other one, and probably made no bones about it. You know, children are different. Obviously, Jacob and Esau were different. They had different abilities, different skills, um, but not one is better than the other, uh, just different, and differences are good. Those are good things, and I think part of our job as a dad uh, or as parents is to look at our children and see what their skills are, how are they, what are their abilities, what are their skills, what are their interests, and to guide them uh, so that they can use those skills uh, to glorify God and to build up his kingdom. And so that's part of that. Now, that all gets crossed up if you've picked one out and, ah, this kid, I love this kid because, woo, he is a chip off the old block. That one, mm-mm, not going to spend any time with that kid. That causes all kinds of problems, and you'll see how that goes into Jacob's family as well. Uh, in Genesis chapter 37, after Jacob has children, he's settled down, he's moved in. Listen to this. Now Israel, that's Jacob because God changed his name. He's the one who wrestled with God. Israel loved Joseph more than all his sons. He elevated Joseph to a higher position than all of his sons because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a very colored tunic, a multicolored tunic, which meant he was favored, which meant he was the heir apparent. And his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, and so they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms. All right, you see how this, this choosing one child above the other child has recapitulated itself in the next generation and the problem that's caused between the other siblings they can't stand him. They hate him, and it's going to result in some bad things. God turns it for good, but they meant it for evil when, they, when he was sold into slavery uh, into Egypt. And so Joseph, when he confronts his brother, said, you meant it for evil, God meant it for good, uh, that God accomplished this even though you intended evil to me. God has done good through it. And so as fathers, I think the, the scripture is clear. We're to pray for children, recognizing God is the giver of children, holds life in his hand. Secondly, we're to pray over our children. Thirdly, when we do have children, we must love them equally, seek to nurture them in the abilities and talents that they have to guide and to direct them 
uh, into so that they can flourish uh, and not be not be held back because of well my dad didn't love me like he loved my brother and carry that junk around that baggage around for the rest of someone's life um, we have to we have to love our children equally and and realize that they are different and relate to them in their differences and uh, recognize that differences are good and and um, guide and direct them through prayer into the uh, the paths that will utilize their abilities, their gifts, their talents, um, and point them in the direction that God would have them to go in. And I think that we can learn that lesson. Uh, Isaac did not do that. Jacob did not do that. Uh, and what a tragedy it was within their own families. Uh, it, was a tr it was a tragedy for Esau and Jacob. They didn't get along. They didn't, they didn't uh, do well with each other. And Joseph and his brothers didn't do well with each other. And you're setting things up for tragedy when one child is chosen above the other uh, and is seen to be loved more than the other. And we have to make, I think, dads, we have to be clear. We love our children equally, uh, and, and we will relate to them in those differences and seek to guide them. But uh, I think the most important thing we can do as far as loving our children is to love them equally. Well, uh, because that's how God loves us, and we should love one another within God's people equally. Well, we're not always going to like each other equally, but we're to love one another equally because that's how God loves us. He, he is no respecter of persons. He loves each one of us, and each one of us he's created unique uh, to reflect his glory. Uh, and in that uniqueness, we get to reflect his glory into the world. Well, I hope you know the love of God. I pray that you do. Uh, God does love you, and he sent his son that you might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and joy indescribable right here and right now. I pray that you know that. I also pray that if you don't have a place of worship, if you don't have a church home, then I invite you to come to Troy First Baptist. We'd love to have you with us. We meet this Sunday at 930 and uh, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, the 28th, we start small groups and Sunday school all over again. And so uh, we are, we'll still have our worship at 930 and then at 1045, our small groups. Uh, but that's not this Sunday. That's next Sunday. This Sunday's Father's Day. We're going to celebrate that most glorious and wonderful of holidays. And <laughs> I'm being facetious, of course. But I look forward to seeing you uh, Sunday, if you don't have a church home, come on and be my guest at Troy First Baptist. Till then, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.